I don't want no holier than thou's at no church that I'm a part of. Amen. Keep your holier than thou ass at home. So let me warn you right now, I'm going to jump in and out of this video making comments because I don't want her words to be missed. I'm not going to cut it up and make her appear to say something she doesn't. And I'm not here to misrepresent her. I love everyone and that includes Kiki Wyatt. But I cannot and the church should not continue to allow the enemy's voice to be the only one that people hear. It's time for the word to speak. This video was being made as a warning to the church. God has not called everyone to be a pastor. If the members don't start holding their leaders accountable, the church will continue to look and sound more like the world. Listen to what Kiki Wyatt has to say. Yes. So I got something to tell y'all. I'm sure y'all already seen it on Shade Room, which is amazing. I love Shade Room. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm curious to to church with my partner, Larry Weathers, in ministry. And it is not going to be the regular, same schmegular. I don't do regular schmegular. Y'all know that. Mm -mm, no, ma'am. But I do God's business. And that's what I'm about. And um, this is crazy. I've been saying for like years and years and years I was going to do a church. So she said she decided to do church. No, we don't do church. We become a part of the body of Christ, which makes up the church. I know people have a way of saying things, but this ain't Bible. But I'm just now like ready for real. I ain't gonna lie, I was scared because mm, I'm a little different, but I have learned that different is good. Different will draw different. And, you know, that's what God wants. And, like, I feel like if, so if I'm a light, right, and I walk in a room full of light, you can't see my light because the room's full of light. But if I'm a light, and I walk in a room full of darkness, you're gonna see that light and it's gonna be very bright, right? She's not lying about this part. Different does speak to those who believe they themselves are different, but it is of no benefit to the world if the one leading acts no different from the world that they're supposed to be calling the people out from. So that's what I wanna do. And starting a church i just feel like any and everybody can come it's it's not like and it's like at three o'clock in the afternoon it's not no morning church it's not none of that is because you know we like to sleep in no shade <laughs> sleep is good look at god all right here it goes this is when a person has to speak against one thing so it seems wrong which then makes the thing they're offering seem right. Let's listen. But, um, it's just, I mean, it ain't no big traditional churchy church mess. Ugh. I hate to say mess, but it's mess. And I just, mm -mm. I've had my share with that and I've had my church hurt. And I know there's so many people out there with church hurt. And God is still real and he is so good and he still loves us. And he wants us to like be everything that we can possibly imagine. Like we just got to allow it. We got to let God do it. So this is my thing. 
I don't care who you are. I don't care what you look like. I don't care if you a you a, a honey, straight, gay, trans, baby. Listen, God, we're all God's children, and He loves us all. I I don't. I, I'm sick and tired of the ch Lord. Please give me the words to say. But I'm sick and tired of church people with all this judgment and all this crap. I'm sick and tired of it. Like, it's, I'm over it. Listen, don't be distracted by her emotion. This is not about church people being judgy. She's failing to realize that God has a standard and everyone who makes the decision to serve God is expected to carry out that standard. Everyone is not a child of God, but everyone has been given the opportunity to become his children if, and this is the key, if they choose to accept the sacrifice that his son Jesus Christ made. I just did a video proving this. Check it out if you want to better understand the links down below. The Bible doesn't restrict anyone from judging. It instructs us to judge righteously. That means we have to first judge ourselves and then ensure that our reason for casting judgment is coming from a biblical and honest place. Judgment is meant to help restore a person, not condemn. Do you understand just how many people today are living sinful lives simply because everyone is too afraid to let others know that how they are living is against God? The church is supposed to tell them so that they can repent and make the necessary change. That's how they can also make it into heaven. That's showing love. Love can only be found in truth. You don't help a person by withholding the very thing they need to produce the change. Like, no, you can love God. Like, I'm I'm still going to sing my r and I'm still doing my shows. Baby, I'm still going to be at that city winery. No shade. Come and check in again out. Come and check a what? Yes, you heard right. Baby, I'm still going to be at that city winery. No shade. Come and check in again out. But I'm saying, you know, I'm still... I'm singing about love. What, what, am I sinning by singing about love? Or making songs for a man and his wife to make love to? Baby, no, I'm not, what, am I, what am I doing wrong? I'm still doing that, putting out an album this year. Thank God, praise the Lord, I'm so happy. Because I ain't did it in 9,000 damn years. But, hmm. I'm still going to do that, and I'm still going to, like, help pastor a church or be part of just churching. Like, I don't care. I don't care what nobody thinks. You can kiss my ass if you don't like it. Get off. Don't come. When I hear her speak, I can't help but think of Tim Ross. You know, the spiritual advisor and mentor for Mike Todd. I can't help but remember when he said, but I have always used strong language in my life, both pre-salvation and post-salvation, and have never felt a conviction of the Holy Spirit. He said that. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that the Holy Spirit told me when we started the pod was uh, the same voice that you have used privately uh, to mentor and to disciple people. That's the voice that I want you to use publicly. Well, that that scared me. Because I was like, I'm going to get canceled. Kiki is telling us that God wants her to be a pastor and to help start a church. But before she ever even gets to the pulpit, she is already telling the church that if they don't like it, they can kiss her. You know what? She is not obeying what Ephesians chapter 4 and 29 said. It said, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. She is not helping those who are lost. She's becoming a stumbling block, just like Tim Ross. When a person convinces themselves that God is okay with their actions, they no longer see it as necessary to change. What is once seen as sinful behavior is now seen as okay. Or God knows me. I don't care what nobody thinks. You can kiss my ass if you don't like it. Get off. Don't come. But the ones that 
have been treated like crap, the ones that have been looked at crazy, the ones that have been talked about, the ones that have just like had it, the ones who have been facing suicide, the ones that have been like made to feel like they ain't nothing. I want y'all. Where y'all at? Where y'all at? I'm going to need to see y'all on Sunday, February the 18th. Okay. I'm going to need to see y'all. So I'm not calling her the enemy, but this is what the enemy does. He speaks to the pain that you have gone through, even though he's really the one who caused it. Catch that because he knows that you want better. So he'll offer you something that seems just like the thing you've been waiting for, when instead all it will do is provide you something that will take you further from what God's word actually says. We have to be able to identify how the enemy works. Because God loves everybody. He loves all of us. He loves us all. Like, this is, this is what... This is what needs to be done. And he told me that it needs to be done. And I said, okay, God, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to do it. What you think I'm going to tell God? No, no, ma'am. No, sir. <laughs> no, thank you, Miss Pam. I can't do it. I've got to say yes to, to Jesus, to God, to the will for my life. And like I said, if you don't like it, gone somewhere and do your holy roller mess and find your way in hell because you sat back and judged the people that was really trying to do God's work because you holier than thou. I don't want no holier than thou's at no church that I'm a part of. Amen. Keep your holier than thou ass at home. Yup. All you judgy people like me Keep your you-know-what at home. <laughs> Listen, I want to say it again. Just because someone says that you're wrong does not mean that they think they're better than you. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and none of us are righteous. No, not one. In fact, Christ said, or the scripture says, that our righteousness is as filthy rags before him. No one can sit here and bo boast or pat themselves on the back for any way that we're living. We're only living by the grace of God. Instead of getting offended, why not compare what the Bible says with what they said? And if the Bible ends up saying that you're wrong, then it's not actually them saying it, it's God. Stay home. I don't, I don't need to preach to you anyway because you, you saved already, right? You got God already, ain't it? Boom. You ain't who I'm, I ain't trying to reach you. I'm trying to reach the ones that don't know God, that is trying to find out a solution instead of suicide or instead move church people. I love you. God bless you. But if you want to come, come on, you know, nigga, let's chill. You know, nigga, let's chill for Jesus. But if you one of them judgy people, no, go on to hell by yourself. I don't want to be a part of that. I'm sorry, I know this video doesn't paint Kiki Wyatt in a great light, but these were her words, not mine. And if she has no issue with saying them, knowing that believers will be watching, why should I even hesitate to show why her words don't line up with Bible? I want to read some scriptures to you, and I want you to decide whether or not she is or can be a pastor, because I don't want you to say I'm just judging her. Let's let the scriptures decide if she is really a pastor or not. Here is a trustworthy saying, which means here is the truth. Whoever aspires to be a pastor desires a noble task, which just means that they want to do good things. But here is the qualifications. The pastor is to be above reproach. Faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. If married, he must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him. 
and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. Let's jump to verse 6. He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. And lastly, he must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Now it's your turn to answer biblically. Does Kiki Wyatt qualify to be a pastor? Forget what you're feeling, forget tradition, forget all of the outside stuff. Based on the scripture, does she qualify to be a pastor? Because based on what I just read, it is not possible that God would have instructed her to become a pastor. And this is only based on 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. I didn't even address Titus chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. Matter of fact, no. For someone, somebody needs to hear this. Let me read it. Let's begin at verse 6. Hold on. Verse 6 says, an elder, which is also a pastor, must be blameless. Again, if married, faithful to his wife, a man whose children believe and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. Verse nine is the scripture that the majority of pastors have forgotten. A pastor must also hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught. That means they must follow what the scriptures have already said so that he can encourage others by what sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. This is important because a pastor who is not obeying and teaching what the scriptures have already said cannot rebuke those who violate it. And like it or not, the qualifications clearly exclude the possibility of our amazing sisters being called to the position of pastor, elder, overseer, bishop, apostle, or even deacon. I've already released an 11 part series proving this fact. If you believe that I am wrong, then please provide scripture to support your belief. Saying that you don't agree or that you just feel like she can, that's not proof. To believe something that the scripture doesn't say or to agree with something that God does not allow reveals that you may not actually be hearing from God at all. I love Kiki Wyatt and I love you. I don't want Kiki to continue to walk against God's word. And I don't want you to believe for a second that it's okay to support a woman who is violating so many of the pastoral qualifications. For those interested in learning more about why God has not called a woman to be a pastor, check out the links below. Please subscribe. I'll see you next time.